I'm very pleased to be joined once again by two members of the New York City Council from Queens, Council Member David Weprin, from Brooklyn, City Council Member David Yasky, both of them candidates for City Controller. We had invited City Council Member Melinda Katz from Queens, also a candidate for Controller, uh, and had expected her to be on our show. Unfortunately, she had a late minute uh, scheduling uh, change. Welcome to Citywide. Thank you. Good to be here. The Independent Budget Office has uh, calculated uh, and no surprise given the turmoil uh, in the economy that profits on Wall Street are plunging, that city tax revenues that capture uh, some portion of that uh, have taken a tremendous hit. Uh, but not only that, that it's going to take years before the city gets back to the point uh, that it was before the meltdown. In fact, they project that by 2012, um, that the revenues on Wall Street are only going to be uh, half of what they had been up until recently. What are the implications of that for New York City? Well, I'm glad you raised that because um, traditionally New York City and New York State uh, have relied too much uh, on Wall Street. Uh, Wall Street in New York City makes up about 8 percent of the jobs, but it actually provides for almost a third of the traditional city revenue that we've relied on. And a lot of that revenue is due to large bonuses that are paid on Wall Street in January, February, and March, which we actually haven't even seen the effect of yet. We know uh, we've lost uh, over 200,000 jobs in the financial services sector, possibly even more than 300,000. The actual number is still uh, being calculated. Uh, but the fall off from that revenue is going to be tremendous, and it's going to go uh, into the future. I think what we have to do is encourage other industries. Uh, this is one area where Councilman uh, Yasky and I have been uh, involved together on, is uh, promoting the film industry uh, in New York City. Uh, we can do that with other industries. We can do that with the high-tech industry. We can compete with uh, California and other places that have traditionally um, you know, been the, um, the main uh, location for, for these industries. I think we have to uh, have less reliance on Wall Street. At the same time, um, I think you're going to be seeing, you know, Wall Street is always going to exist. It's still a very important industry to New York City. Uh, at the same time, I think we have to, uh, you know, look at the reality uh, that we can't rely, we can't put all our eggs in one basket from a budget point of view, and we can't just rely on that industry. Ken, you asked what's the impact on the city. The impact is major. You know, we've taken a body blow. Now, we're going to get through it. We're going to come out the other side. We'll be better city than ever, but we're going to have to make tough decisions now for that to happen. Uh, we've got to get city spending under control. The city budget has gone up 25 percent, even accounting for inflation in the last six years. We, we can't afford that anymore. We have to diversify our economy. You know, you, David's absolutely right on the film industry. When I introduced the film tax credit bill, which the administration opposed at first, you know, people said, oh, it won't, won't do anything. It's doubled the number of film industry jobs in the city. We can't just rely on, on Wall Street. Um, when I fought to keep the port uh, of in Brooklyn, the container port open, and the administration opposed that. We, we fought, we prevailed, we won, that port's still there. Those kind of jobs we can't afford to let go. We have to develop uh, the green economy. In, we, we tried a pilot program in North Brooklyn for energy grants for businesses that, are, uh, that, that would adopt energy saving technology. It, we it gave out 700,000 in grants. It's already saved those businesses twice that much in energy costs. So we're going to have to be very creative and innovative in diversifying the city economy. Is there a strategy also, though, for helping Wall Street? Um, earlier in our conversation, uh, David Yasky, you alluded to the fact that New York's leadership role in um, the world economic stage was uh, possibly at, uh, at, at risk. And while I think most people would agree that the diversification is, uh, is, uh, is critical, um, we certainly don't want to lose our, our role as the world financial uh, uh, capital. So what can city government do to help the Wall Street firms prosper in New York City? Okay, a few things. First, you're right, uh, but we have to really take account of the reality. I mean, 
Merrill Lynch is a North Carolina company. Lehman Brothers is a British company. Uh, AIG is maybe a Washington, D.C. It's owned by the federal government really now. Uh, Bear Stearns is out of business. So w we have to take account of that reality and adapt to it. Now, there's a whole tier of what had been uh, smaller but m nimble financial firms and businesses in New York City that I think are poised to become the leaders of the industry, but we have to help them, we have to nurture them. What do we do? We create the conditions for growth. That means we have to keep the streets safe, we have to keep them clean. We can't go back to the fiscal crisis when garbage was piling up and people felt like they couldn't go out on the street after dark. We have to invest in the basic services to keep the city running. And we have to make it easy to do business here. That means investing in mass transit so people can get around. It means dealing with some of the traffic and congestion issues that you know the mayor, I think, was right to try and do. Because we can't be a world economic capital if it's going to take somebody an hour and a half to get from midtown to downtown. So that's the role the city government can play. Yeah, I mean, there's no question. Uh, Wall Street is still... Um what uh, the oil industry is to Texas, uh, Wall Street has traditionally been to New York. And uh, I'm just recognizing the reality uh, of the short term. But in the long term, I think Wall Street will come back, and I think it will come back strong. So we have to do everything in our power uh, to, to work with Wall Street. Uh, it's a smaller Wall Street. It's a trimmer uh, Wall Street. But I think we have to uh, really work together in the financial services uh, area. Um, you know, look, uh, we have to uh, make it a more attractive place to do business in general. Uh, we have to uh, take care of uh, quality of life issues. Uh, public safety uh, is paramount. If you don't have public safety, uh, you're not going to be able to encourage uh, people to uh, work in New York City and firms to headquartered in New York City. Our school system is essential. We have to uh, you know, make sure that uh, our school, school system stays uh, strong. Uh, probably those are the two uh, major issues why employers uh, be, decide to headquarter in New York City and why CEOs, by the way, um, you know, decide to, uh, to live in a particular area. The reason a lot of CEOs traditionally have lived outside of New York City uh, is that they were worried about the school system or even potentially public safety. I think we have to do things to change that, and I think it is changing. I think you're seeing that more CEOs um, live in Manhattan uh, than have in the past. You know, Ken, I, I think New Yorkers can feel good about a lot of the progress that the city government has made. The streets are a lot safer than they were 15, 20 years ago. The schools are better. There are large parts of Brooklyn, where I represent, um, where people were shunning the public schools. Now they're flocking to them. But we have to recognize that progress is at risk. That's why this year's city elections, I think, are such a watershed moment. We can go back to the kind of politics as usual, you know, the clubhouse politics, the special interests. We have to have a city government that's focused on looking for the future, on being innovative and on holding the, the agencies accountable and responsible. If we, if we do that, we hold on to the progress we've made and we build on it. If we go back to politics as usual, we go back to the bad old days. The city controller, in addition to monitoring and influencing the delivery of city services, which is important, as you've both uh, very clearly uh, pointed out, in, um, in New York City's role as the host community for, uh, for, uh, for Wall Street, uh, in addition to that, you would be the chief investment officer of the city of New York with a variety of boards uh, that um, uh, work with the, uh, the controller in investing um, hundreds of billi uh, hundreds, billions, at least, of, 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 of pension dollars. Can you talk a little bit about what your philosophy would be as the chief investment officer? Is, is, is it, uh, do you think that the most important thing is to look out for alternative investment strategies? Is it to be a shareholder activist on social issues? What do you think you would do differently from what Controller Bill Thompson's been doing? Yeah, actually, um, Controller Thompson has expanded uh, the investment significantly. I think I can build on that. Uh, for example, um, part of the problem why um, the um, pension funds have gone down so much in value in the last six months or even nine months, uh, we've gone down probably um, as much as 15, 20 percent. Uh, is because of the heavy weighting in equities. We've actually expanded um, reducing that. Uh, Tom, Controller Thompson has expanded that. I'd like to even go a little further. Um, real estate. There's a lot we can do in real estate. Even though the real estate market in New York City has gone down a little bit, 
Uh, it's still in the long term. Uh, real estate will survive in New York City. Uh, it's a very uh, healthy industry. It's still a healthy industry. Uh, there's a lot more investments can be made in, in real estate. Uh, in other alternative investments, uh, I think we need to have a more balanced portfolio uh, in our pension system. You know, I was on Wall Street for 20 years. Uh, you know, I know uh, how Wall Street works. I think it's important uh, that we get the, uh, the best and the brightest. At the same time, uh, we have a diversified portfolio. You know, if there's one key principle, it's high level of professionalism. When we've gotten in trouble in the past, not Bill Thompson's been terrific, but in the past you've seen politics play too much of a role uh, in the controller's office. We have to make this a 100% professional operation. That's my commitment. That's my, my background. I was a, a lawyer at one of the top firms. I worked in the city budget office as a professional uh, budget person. You know, you know uh, we do need a diversified portfolio. Uh, we can learn some from other uh, investment managers. Uh, we've trailed about a percentage point behind California over the last 10 years. Now, that does people say one percentage point. Well, on a hundred billion dollar portfolio, one percent is a billion dollars. That's a lot of police officers, a lot of teachers, because uh, every savings goes right into the city budget. Uh, we we do need more of what they used to call alternative investments, now managers are realizing to be a truly diversified portfolio, it can't just be stocks that are traded on the stock exchange, it has to be investment in private companies, in things like real estate. You know, th some of the universities that have gotten 20% returns have invested in timber and asset, direct investment in commodities. So we, we need the top professionals that will make those kind of smart investments. Citywide will continue right after this. Sure, my neighbors Gene and Louise, they may be superheroes with superpowers, but that doesn't make them so super at saving energy and money. Honey! I may not be able to harness the power of the elements, but I save significant cash and help the environment with appliances, electronics, and windows featuring the Energy Star label. Discover your own energy saving superpowers with Energy Star. Go to getenergysmart.org. Welcome back to Citywide. We're speaking with two of the leaders of the city council, David Weprin, David Yasky, both candidates for uh, city controller. The municipal bond market, the city's ability to borrow money, um, has been compromised by uh, the turmoil in the credit markets um, and has been further complicated by the discovery that um, very sophisticated techniques that were developed to try and make things better uh, may have made things worse. Uh, not only uh, derivatives and complex uh, financial formulas that uh, even their inventors don't seem to understand, uh, but also the fact that the um, underwriting of the, of the rating of the bonds by agencies that were supposed to be providing objective uh, views uh, may have been compromised and also reports that the allocation of assets by the pension funds itself was compromised by uh, politics with investigations uh, in New York State uh, into former controller Hevesy's office and his association with some of his political colleagues and now um, in other states as well. Um, David Weprin, I know you have some background in public finance. Um, is that market out of control? Um, and what can the city of New York do to, 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 to right it? You know, I don't think it's out of control. I mean, basically, public finance uh, are infrastructure needs. All municipalities have infrastructure needs. They have to build schools. They have to build housing. They have to build roads. They have to build bridges. They have to have a water and sewer system. So we still have those same infrastructure needs. Those infrastructure needs will always uh, be in existence. Yes, we have relied on creative financing, which um, actually in the case of New York City uh, has benefited uh, due to some of uh, you know, the so-called uh, derivative products and uh, you know, variable rate uh, debt. Uh, New York City has been very innovative, and they have a tremendously professional staff, and a lot of the problems have not really occurred uh, with the larger issuers, but with some of the smaller issuers. This, these markets are unprecedented. Uh, there's no question that the auction rate security market uh, stopped for, for a number of, uh, of uh, months. Uh, people were stuck, uh, you know, with uh, having to reset uh, interest rates without bids, and that's how you had uh, a steep up 
you know, of uh, interest rates, uh, which would never happen before uh, in the auction rate market, in the variable rate market, that is stabilized. Uh, you know, the municipal market uh, tends to correct itself to a certain extent, but I think it's important uh, that there be proper regulation. Uh, part of the problem, uh, you know, has been that, uh, you know, possibly there hasn't been enough uh, oversight uh, and regulation. I think there's a lot can be done with that. Uh, but overall, uh, I don't think we should say, uh, you know, everything should be plain vanilla because uh, not everything works for every uh, municipality in New York City in particular. Uh, what they should be doing more of is pay-as-you-go debt. Uh, they should be doing more uh, refinancings. They do it now. Uh, they should continue to do it because that's how uh, you get our debt down. You know, we're paying almost uh, 20 cents on the dollar now. Uh, the MTA uh, has their problems because they're paying 20 percent, uh, 20 cents on the dollar. New York City is getting close to that as well. Uh, I think we have to uh, do more pay-as-you-go capital. You know, look, I'm sorry. I, I can't ag agree with David here. Um, of course, we need infrastructure. We need sewers. We need roads. But that's no excuse for Wall Street insiders to gouge the taxpayers, which really is what you've been seeing. The, you mentioned just a few of the problems. The rating agencies, it's, they've, it's been exposed now that the rating agencies have a double standard. They treat municipal debt, city government debt, differently than private companies, even though we're much less subject to default, they, they give us lower ratings, and that makes us pay more. And that's purely to benefit the rating agencies. That has got to be stopped. And I disagree that you can count on the financial industry to correct itself, especially when, it, when government is the victim, because too often uh, they get very cozy with the insiders, and the, the Wall Street insiders get cozy with the government insiders, as happened in the past in the controller's office, uh, and it's the taxpayers who lose out. So I think you need a very aggressive watchdog in that controller's office to make sure that taxpayers' interests are protected. So, an activist controller, is that consistent with the notion of somebody who wants to make Wall Street comfortable staying in New York? Oh, absolutely. You do both. Look, the controller has a whole host of responsibilities. Um, you, ha you have to uh, manage the portfolio, the, the, the pension portfolios prudently, so you protect retirees' money, and that means being sensible and being appropriately cautious, uh, but you have to be aggressive as a watchdog against vis-a-vis the, the mayor and the administration and looking out for waste and abuse in, in the city government. If you don't have a controller playing that role, uh, spending can get out of hand. So you, absolutely, you have to do both. Well, you know, I didn't say there should be less regulation. I think it's very important uh, that the regulators, um, and uh, a lot of it is done at the federal level, but, but certainly uh, the controller can play an activist role. But I think they have to um, work with Wall Street as well. Uh, and, you know, overall, uh, needs are going to be there for, uh, for infrastructure, and uh, there are ways that um, Wall Street can work uh, with, with government uh, to really uh, see that those needs are done you know, at a more effective basis, a costlier basis. You know, there's a lot of money that can be saved uh, uh, in underwriting fees, in financial advisory fees, in a competitive process. I think we need more uh, to encourage competition among Wall Street. And I think uh, if you have that, if you have uh, somebody that has the background, that knows the industry, uh, that can work uh, with Wall Street as far as creating more competition among them, uh, New York City will save a lot more money uh, in underwriting costs as well as financial advisory fees. It, look, of course, you have to work with Wall Street, but in the context particularly of municipal finance, you know, the industry is a special interest whose interests are different from the interests of the taxpayers, and it's a controller's job to look out for the taxpayers. That's what I've done in the council, and I've been unafraid to, to call the special interests on it when they're taking advantage of the taxpayers. There was a program called Homeworks in the housing department. They were paying $700,000 to create each affordable apartment, you know, and the industry was comfortable with it. I called them on it, and they canceled that program. Is there an opportunity for public-private partnerships beyond what New York City has done to, to be able to, maybe the private sector can do something more efficiently or there are trade-offs where, where each side can benefit? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. You know, there's a lot of uh, talent, especially with uh, some of the turmoil on Wall Street. Uh, there's a lot of um, talent that we can take uh, from the private sector and bring into the public sector. Uh, you know, there's a lot of um, companies that would be very happy 
uh, to provide pro bono uh, employees. No, I'm, uh, I'm not talking about pro bono. I'm talking about a situation where you uh, uh, privatize the wastewater system in order to get uh, an additional source of, uh, of capital, uh, get a developer to build a public amenity in exchange for some kind of benefit. Should, should we be doing more yeah, of that? Yeah, well, we do that now, and I think there's no question we can, we can expand on it. You know, we have uh, you know, a tremendous resource in the private sector. Uh, by the way, the problems we're having now uh, in our fiscal crisis at the city and state level, uh, the only way we can, we're going to get out of that is to really work closely uh, with the private sector and with labor unions because, you know, when we had our fiscal crisis in, in the 70s, uh, the way New York City was to get out of the, got out of the crisis was to work uh, with labor and the private sector uh, together because we were all in it. You know, nobody's going to benefit uh, from the loss of jobs. No one's going to benefit uh, from budget deficits uh, and cutting and trimming. Uh, what we really need uh, is, a, is a partnership, uh, public-private, uh, as well as working uh, with the unions. I think there's a ton more opportunity for what you said, public-private partnerships in the finance world. They call it P3, public-private partnerships. You know, the, the private sector is going to do things more efficiently. It will. My favorite example, look at Ground Zero. Look at Ground Zero, where, you ha where it was a private company that had a profit incentive to get something done. They put up a building, it's tenanted, it's there. The part that the government is supposed to do is a hole in the ground. A hole in the ground, you know, eight years later. And that is, that to me is just illustrates, if you want to get something done, the, the private sector does do it efficiently. Now, what you need is an aggressive overseer in the government to make sure that the end that's being served is the public's end and not the industry's end. So we just have a, a, a couple of minutes left. If you were going to sum up your, your, your vision of New York and the, the way forward over the next couple of years and the role that you'd like to play as the controller, what would that be, David Yasky? It's a middle-class city. It's an entrepreneurial place where st people can still come and do from all over the world. You look what has happened in Brooklyn in, in the last several years. People come from all over the world and have rebuilt neighborhoods, and that's a glorious thing to see. We have to make sure this stays a city of opportunity where people can come and make it, and the, and the government's job is to create the conditions where people can pursue their dreams. David Weprin. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, the controller, in addition to being the chief financial officer of the city, uh, has a bully pulpit, and you have to use that bully pulpit uh, to uh, encourage people uh, to come to New York City. You know, we, we have to be um, an efficient city, but we also have to be a compassionate city. Uh, you know, when we do our, uh, our cutting, we have to uh, trim. We can't just cut uh, all agencies alike. By the way, when the mayor proposed, uh, you know, his across-the-board cut, I said not every agency is alike. I think we should um, use a scalpel, uh, you know, rather than uh, a hatchet uh, to do cutting. We have to uh, keep the middle class in the city. We have to uh, build a strong school system. We have to make sure that public safety uh, and the perception of public safety uh, is there, because that's what's going to encourage the middle class to stay in the city and to thrive in the city. My thanks to Brooklyn City Council Member David Yasky, Queen City Council Member David Weprin. I'm Ken Fisher. Thank you for joining us on this discussion of Citywide.